Hi there, my name is Brian Story and I'm an assessments teacher engagement manager. Uh, in this video, I'm going to share some tips and ideas on how to make assessments work for you and your students uh, in the distance learning environment. The goal of this video is to give teachers uh, tips on how to use assessments in the online learning environment uh, from grades two onward. Uh, it's key that teachers also use Google Classroom as that's required for assessments as well. To reach our goal, first we're going to spend some time overviewing some basics, and then we'll zero in on the specific challenges teachers are facing right now, and then how you can respond to those challenges uh, with your students from a distance. So we'll start just by giving a quick overview of assessments. Assessments is a free web-based tool uh, that teachers can use. Uh, they can assign from the library of content based on what they already like to assign to their students. And it's designed to be a way to enhance your core curriculum because students get feedback on their answers and you get a report uh, filled with useful data that you can use to stage interventions or otherwise assist your students based on their performance. And assistance is used all over the world, including in all 50 states of the United States. Uh, we have thousands of teachers using our tool, and we're also present in over 20 different countries. So typically, assistance works uh, by having teachers create assignments, assisting students through those assignments with immediate feedback, assessing the student's performance on the assignment, and then finally analyzing data from the students together with them. But now there are some new considerations to think about, given that all teachers and students are working in this distance learning environment. To address this, first we want to talk about what happens before the four steps of assessments. Typically the teacher uh, is doing some kind of uh, instruction or they're teaching before they engage students in work uh, on assessments. But in this new environment, Teachers have to figure out how they can deliver instruction from a distance and then also how they can analyze that data with students when they're not in the classroom with them. So given that, our focus for the rest of this video is going to be on delivering instructions to students and on analyzing data with students once they finish their assignments. So delivering instruction to students from a distance, we're going to focus on four different tips that you can use uh, to do this with students, namely attaching instructions and resources to assignments, adding comments to an assignment, making assignments for specific students, and making or finding instructional videos uh, to share with your students. As a quick reminder, uh, before you've engaged in doing anything with Google Classroom, you've already chosen the content that you want to assign, A, selected specific problems from that content that you want students to complete, B, and then finally, you've pushed those problems into Google Classroom for students to complete, C. So tip one is about adding instructions or resources uh, to an assignment. And it's pretty straightforward to do. In the Classwork tab of any class, uh, you can see your list of assignments. You can click the triple dot next to that assignment and click Edit. This will then open up a screen that allows you to add instructions or add uh, various resources uh, that might help students during their assignment. And I'm just going to spend some time showing this to you really quickly. I'll go back to a class here. And so if I go to the classwork tab uh, and I can see all of my assignments here, I'm going to click the triple dot and I'm going to click edit. And this allows me to go ahead and add those instructions or again, add links to resources that already exist, or even use the Google Suite to create new resources to help students through the assignment. Next is adding comments to an entire assignment. Typically, when you're in class with students, and uh, let's say you've planned a lesson, you try to anticipate those big questions that 15 different kids may try to ask you at once uh, so that you can address them proactively and be able to focus class time on helping students that really need your help. Uh, from a distance, you can do this in Google uh, by actually adding uh, a quick comment uh, underneath any assignment that students can view uh, and that may help them uh, through their work. To do this, you go to the Classwork tab where we just were, and you can click the assignment in that tab, and then you'll see the option in the dropdown to view that assignment. Once you click View Assignment, you can go to the Instructions tab, and you'll see the option to add a class comment that all students will see in this class. And I'm just going to illustrate this for you really quickly. So if I go to the assignment, I click View Assignment. 
I go to the instructions tab, and then here I can go ahead and add those comments that I want the entire class to see. Another thing that you can do in your regular classroom is uh, assigning different types of work to different students based on how much time they take to do assignments, what skill levels they have coming in. Uh, from a distance, you can do this in Google uh, by going ahead and assigning whatever problems you want to assign to any groups of students in your class. And then once you've assigned in Google, uh, you can actually edit the assignment and select or deselect students uh, based on who you want to see any specific assignment. And I'll just show you what this looks like. So when I go to the Classwork tab, and then I click Edit for any assignment, I can then see the four option up here in the top right-hand corner. And then I can click this drop-down and select or deselect the students I want to see this assignment. Another thing that teachers will want to do is deliver instruction, but since you're not in class and you can't do that directly in front of students, uh, you may consider adding an instructional video uh, as an attachment to your assistance assignment in Google. Uh, there are a few different ways you can do this. Some teachers may decide that they want to make their own videos. Um, one tool that you can use for that is uh, Screencastify, which is a free Google Chrome add-on uh, that allows you to make your own videos. Uh, but many other teachers may decide that they want to use one of many high-quality instructional videos that are available uh, on YouTube as well. And we provided a link uh, to some of those different accounts on YouTube you may find useful uh, so that you can use those uh, with your students. So once you've had students complete their assignment, uh, and, they, and you've gotten the data from them, uh, you'll then want to figure out how can you analyze that data or engage students in that data uh, when they're not in the classroom with you. And again, uh, we've zeroed in on how you can deliver instruction from a distance. Now we're going to talk about how you can analyze this data with students from a distance. Uh, to do this, we're going to focus on four different ideas. Number one, uh, doing a notice and wonder with the item report, writing about a common wrong answer, providing individualized feedback for students, and providing whole class feedback. So for the notice and wonder, uh, you can take a screenshot of any item report you have. Uh, keep in mind that you can actually edit uh, the item report or curate this data by clicking the arrows at the top of each column to reorder the data. And then once we've taken a screenshot, uh, you can then give students a quick prompt where they have to take a look at the data. And here you can see we've asked them to explain uh, two things that they notice and two things that they wonder about the outcomes that they see in this data. Another idea is doing a common wrong answer investigation. For this, you can take a screenshot of the question you want students to focus on and then a small screenshot from the data report of the common wrong answer information for that question. And you can see here we've prompted students to explain why 9 is incorrect and what misunderstandings students might have who answered 9. But in general, you can ask students to explain where students might have gone wrong, how can they avoid this mistake in the future, and that's going to give you important information about where the students are in the learning process. Next, you can comment to individual students. Uh, to do this, you simply click on the Classwork tab, and then click uh, View Assignment in the drop down for any assignment. Once you're there, uh, you can go to the Student Work tab, and on the left side, you'll see your list of students in the class. To send a comment to any individual student, you just click their name, and then you'll have a dialog box open where you can exchange uh, and provide feedback with your student. And I'll just show you what this looks like. So if I go, I'm here in the Classwork tab, I click View Assignment. And then here, I'm already in the Student Work tab, so I can go ahead and click one of my students' names, and then I'm able to go ahead and send them a comment and provide individualized feedback to them. In addition, you can also use Google Classroom to send emails directly to your students. I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time overviewing how to email uh, because I know everybody watching this video knows how to email and is probably dealing with lots of emails right now. Uh, but I just want to highlight that uh, if you go to the Classwork tab, click View Assignment on any assignment, and then go to the Student Work tab, you'll see an email symbol in the top left corner, and you can click that uh, to email selected students uh, and give them feedback as needed. And just to show you what this looks like, I'll go back.
back to the Classwork tab, click View Assignment, and then here in the Student Work tab, you can see is the mail symbol where I can go ahead and select individual students to email directly from Google. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today and uh, check out this video and learn the different ways that you can engage students from a distance using assessments. As a reminder, please feel free to check out our uh, website resources at the Dis Distance Learning Help Center, which is linked at the top of assessments.org right now. In addition, we also have our blog and how it works pages where you can find useful tips and uh, teacher perspectives on using assessments. And finally, feel free to join the discussion among assistance teachers and experts by joining our Facebook teacher user community. Um, it's a lively discussion, and the more teachers we have engaging, the more useful tips, tricks, and hints can be shared amongst teachers to expand their practice around using assistance in Google Classroom. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us uh, at contact.assistments.org or check out our website, which is www.assistments.org.